We've all seen it. Influencers making hundreds of thousands of dollars just by posting sponsored pictures and videos onto their Instagram profile. But we are going to investigate wildlife influencers rather than influencers in the wild. Wildlife Instagrams and influencers, they do exist, not making quite as much money, but still a significant amount of cash per post. Getting your photo to go viral can be a real game changer for wildlife photographers and influencers alike. But the desire for that social media fame can push some people to go to extreme lengths to create the perfect shot in order to get those likes and shares. Here we have a lizard, which seems to be doing something very strange. A frog riding a tortoise? And a lizard, where you can clearly see that something isn't quite right. The issue with these photos is that none of them are actually real. They have all been staged using very dubious tactics. I sat down with Pod O'Grady, a wildlife photographer and former manager of the GVI base in Madagascar, who's committed to promoting responsible photography. With years of experience in the field, he shared with me how to spot these unethical practices. Um, so I know today we're going to be touching on some pretty hard-hitting um, ethical points of view in terms of uh, wildlife photography and the lengths that some people have gone to in the past to manipulate a situation for that perfect photo. How can a nature lover spot a fake wildlife photo? Every now and then, every photographer is going to get like one brilliant photo and it's going to be like, you know, a gem in their portfolio. For me, it's looking at a portfolio, looking for something that is too good to be true. Like every image is basically magical. And doing your research into like the animals you're looking at, like should they actually be there? Is that an animal in its native environment? When it comes to suspect wildlife photos, can you talk me through the most common things that you see? You can manipulate the image long before you take it. And the most common way people do that is what I call baiting instead of waiting. You can stack the odds in your favor. You bring in food, you bring in blood, you bring in anything that will trigger that animal to come to your area. You can basically change the animal's behavior and get it to come to you. If one photographer does this once, okay. You don't think that's a big deal, but then everyone starts to do it. And then all of a sudden, these animals are starting to associate people with food and they're coming to areas where they shouldn't be there very often. And then people are beginning to be worried because, okay, now animals are approaching people who aren't photographers, who don't have food, looking for food. So that's one of the big ones. Occasionally you will see like the odd frog on a caiman or a crocodile because it's so small, it doesn't constitute a threat or even a meal. But I kept seeing photos of the you know, frogs riding beetles with frogs riding tortoises, a snail riding a frog riding a tortoise. And what's happening there is people are buying animals from pet shops. A lot of them they're buying are cold-blooded. So you're amphibians, you're invertebrates, you're reptiles. And they, what they do is they put them in the fridge, in the freezer. Because these animals get their energy from just being in their environment, it basically slows them right down. And then they just stack them together the way they want, snap off all the photos. And then just when they're done, they just get rid of them. And then, of course, there's people who do the same thing, but even in what can be maybe regarded as an even more inhumane way which is they tie animals up or they glue them down. Um, a lot of animals are very, very skittish. You want a good close-up shot and you really got to wait. You really got to earn that shot. You don't have to do that if you've glued the animal to the ground. And then there's, of course, the post-production. Uh, you tie an animal up with string or with wire. You pose it, whatever you want. If you're good with Photoshop, 10 minutes. They will have no idea. You can post it online, get a million likes, and it's not even, not even a question. It will absolutely go viral, some of these crazy photos. I've seen... Lizards, monkeys, birds, all sorts of stuff posed in ways I know they didn't do that. Okay, Pod, so you must have seen a wide array of these manipulated images. Um, in your opinion, which is the most blatant case of wildlife photography that's been augmented? The most blatant and probably one of the most sort of ridiculous stories was at one of the World Photo Awards relatively recently. I think it was 2019, but I can't be sure. Um, but it has been like the last few years, which is the, the winning photo was a photo of a giant anteater. And I remember personally thinking, an, like an anteater is an amazing subject, very cool animal, hard to get a good photo of, very skittish. And, you know, the giant ones, they're, they're big. They're called giant for a reason. This is a great photo, like wide angle up close, like someone's really had to work for this. But when you look at the photo for longer than 20 seconds, you start to look at the anteater, like 
it looks wrong. It looks strange. And it turns out that the anteater is not alive. The photographer has borrowed a taxidermied anteater from a local museum, taken it around the corner into a little patch of forest, staged this photo, taken the photos, and then won a very, very prestigious award. Of course, a lot of people, once it went live, went, that anteater looks very, very familiar. And a few people went down to their museum, like, here's a photo. It's identical, down to the size, the shape, the angle of the claws, everything. So to me, that was just ridiculous. That one, they got so far with that photo. Uh, but at the end, they effectively torpedoed their own career because that photo will follow them forever. They had to return the prize, which I think was a significant prize. A lot of like very nice camera gear. And I'm pretty sure there was a monetary prize involved. All had to be returned. And now this photo, this one very strange idea will follow them forever. Uh, in your opinion, do you think it's going to change? Do you think it's only going to get worse with the increase in access to the regular person having high quality cameras? What do you think the future is for this this kind of photography? I'm really hoping it gets better. And I think sort of like how I'm seeing like, you know, the most recent generation of people, like how they interact with things on like an ethical point and a moral point of view. People are very staunch in their views. Like I don't feel that like, you know, the current generation, I guess Gen Z, as you would say, they're not going to be the ones involved in doing things like this. They're going to like everyone, they're going to want to see, there's going to be some people who really, really want to see animals. That's every generation. That's never going to stop. But I feel like the point of view, like their morals, like people are very, very strong in their morals now, which is nice. So I'm really hoping we're going to see, even though you know there's a much easier access to like really high cutting digital technology available from an early age now, I'm hoping that we'll begin to see a drop in this sort of practices because they are just a lot of them so shameful. And the ones that are, you know, sort of like the David Jarrett using captive animals, but being transparent about it. Like, I think that probably will grow. That area of it will get larger, but I wouldn't be surprised to see you know these practices, which are a combination of different genres of photography all coming together under the wildlife umbrella. I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see a rise in that, but you know, a transparent rise. A video was shared in 2020 that dolphins were swimming in the now clear canals of Venice. Headline, coronavirus upside. Fish and dolphins seen swimming in Venice canals during lockdown. That video was soon debunked, and it turns out that that clip was actually recorded 450 miles away in Sardinia and edited to appear as in Venice. One year later, a video surfaced of dolphins swimming in Venice that was real, but the seed of doubt had been sown by the fake post in 2020, making the legitimate footage difficult to believe. Headline, Dolphin Swimming in Venice Canals, for real this time. Without being overly cynical, it can be disheartening to know that in the age of fake news, there can be fake good news too. And what might seem like harmless posting at first can mask the true beauty that nature has to offer and warp expectations. You can view Pod's photography following the link in the description, as well as some further reading on the subject. Please do leave a comment if you think you've come across any fake wildlife photos. We would love to check them out. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you learned a lot. Please click the like button to help our video gain more reach. Hit subscribe to stay updated with our channel's content and hit the notification bell to see our content the minute it's released. This is Amelia, signing off.